An Israeli drone strike in southern Lebanon has reportedly killed a senior commander of the Hezbollah militant group. Hezbollah issued a statement confirming that uh, Wissam Hassan al-Tawil had been killed in a strike on Monday, but provided no further detail. Lebanese security sources said he was a member of Hezbollah's elite Radwan force and that he died in an attack on a vehicle in the southern village of Kir Betzel, near the border with Israel. This is the second high-profile killing inside Lebanon in 2024 to be blamed on Israel. Last week, Hamas's deputy leader, Salah Arouri, was killed in a blast in a Beirut suburb. And we can join the DW correspondent Abbas al-Kashali, who, uh, who's in the Lebanese uh, capital, uh, Beirut. Uh, welcome. Uh, tell us more about Hezbollah's reaction to the killing of uh, Wissam Hassan al-Tawil. Good morning. Uh, Hezbollah mourns him. Yesterday, they called him a uh, commander. Al-Tawil became a member of the Islamic resistance since 1989. Hezbollah posted photos on its uh, own website of Al-Tawil with leaders, including Secretary General Said Hassan Nasrallah and Imad Maghni, its military commander, who was killed in Syria in 2008. Another photo showed him sitting next to the uh, former leader of the Iranian Al-Quds force, Qasem Soleimani, who was killed by a U.S. drone strike in Baghdad uh, four years ago. Uh, Wissam al-Tawil was a commander in Hezbollah's elite uh, Radwan forces and the most senior Hezbollah commander killed so far in the conflict. Right. Now, Israel hasn't commented on this strike, but why would it be interested in eliminating Hezbollah leaders? Hezbollah is stating from the beginning that its goal to uh, alleviate pressure on Gaza and with some Tawil being one of the leaders in Hezbollah responsible for the operations in the south. Yesterday, a senior source uh, in Lebanon said he played a leading role in directing its operations in the south. Right. So how would his elimination uh, affect the, the war in Gaza? Look, there are many developments happened since two months. Uh, top commander in Radwan force killed in late November. The top Iranian commander, Radi Musawi, was killed in Syria. Saleh al aruri deputy head of the Hamas political bureau, was killed last week in Beirut. The targeting of commanders and leaders of Hezbollah and its ally can lead to uh, exacerbate the situation along the southern border of Lebanon. And the fears of further escalation is existing here in Beirut and Lebanon. But uh, one of the security sources in Lebanon said about the strike to, uh, yesterday, this is a very painful strike. And another one said things will flare up. So we don't know what will happen the next hours or, or days. Uh, you know that um, the people here are looking for a peace and uh, the situation is very critical. Right. And so how likely then, we'll just, just pick up that point about uh, escalation, because that's what everyone is looking at. Um, how likely is that to uh, inflame what is going on and, uh, and escalate the, the conflict in the region? Um, you know, it's dependent on the both sides, on Israel and Hezbollah. Uh, the possibility to escalate the situation is here, but it's the, um, uh, one of the newspaper. Uh, Lebanese newspaper uh, wrote today, it looked like a race between war and diplomacy. Uh, the officials here in Lebanon, they tried to do their best to de-escalate the situation, and uh, depending on the diplomacy till now. Okay, thank you for that, DW correspondent Abbas al-Kashali in Beirut. You, you're welcome. You're welcome. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Israel as part of a week-long diplomatic tour aimed at trying to prevent an escalation of the war in Gaza. He arrived in Tel Aviv late on Monday. He is due to meet uh, Israel's President Isaac Herzog before meeting Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his war cabinet. Mr. Blinken is expected to push Israel to do more to protect civilian lives as it fights Hamas, which the U.S. and other countries have classified as a terrorist organization. The U.S. also wants more aid for the people of Gaza. Secretary Blinken spoke to reporters in Saudi Arabia before boarding his plane to Israel. I'll have an opportunity to share with Israeli leaders everything I've heard thus far uh, on this trip and also to talk to them uh, about the future direction of their military campaign in Gaza. Uh, I will press on the absolute imperative to do more to protect civilians and to do more to make sure that humanitarian assistance 
is getting into the hands of those who need it. A special correspondent, Aya Ibrahim, joins us uh, from Jerusalem. Uh, welcome, Aya. Um, how is Israel likely to view Antony Blinken's visit? Well, it is his fourth visit to the region since October uh, 7th and before coming here to Israel. The Secretary of State uh, has had a tour of the region where he has listened to the concerns of uh, Arab leaders about the ongoing war uh, in, in Gaza. Um, he will likely be trying to bring uh, the message that the, that the Biden administration has been echoing for the past weeks that Israel needs to... Um, pay more attention to civilian life in its conduct uh, of the war. There will also be discussions about the proverbial day after uh, the war. We've seen in the past uh, two weeks or so different ideas coming from different ministers within the Israeli cabinet. No official policy yet about what should happen in Gaza after the war, uh, but we have seen the defense minister lay out uh, plans that include uh, no civilian uh, presence in the Strip, whereas the finance minister and uh, um, the uh, national security ministers have said that they want to see the return of Israeli settlements uh, to the Strip. So it's going to be a tall order on his uh, uh, visit, discussing a combination between the what should happen uh, in the war, but also bringing the wishes of the region to Israeli leaders as to what should happen after the war as well. Right. And, and despite being Israel's biggest backer, you, you, you touched on the, the significant uh, disagreements that there have been between these two allies. Um, how much influence does the US uh, have on Israel? That's correct. The US Israel's biggest backer is so one would think that if anybody has an influence on Israeli leadership, it would be the United uh, States. Uh, the, but Israeli leadership has says that they will conduct this war uh, the way that they see fit uh, to achieve their uh, sort of professed goals from uh, the war. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have heard President Biden, uh, for example, say that he has been quietly trying to get uh, Israel to significantly reduce its presence uh, in the Strip. And there are signs even from Israeli leadership now that the strategy, the military strategy within the Strip is uh, changing, uh, that in the northern part, uh, the IDF will be focusing on raids and the destruction of tunnels while uh, targeting Hamas leadership in the south. Now, this doesn't really, you know, necessarily give any comfort to the civilians in the Gaza Strip, most of which are now crammed in the south. And we've seen how imprecise Israeli strikes can be in targeting Hamas leadership, oftentimes taking, um, you know, large numbers of casualties, so-called uh, collateral damage in the targeting of, this, uh, of Hamas leaders. Okay, thank you uh, for that, Aya. Aya Ibrahim in Jerusalem.